Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Disclaimer, this recording is not intended to be utilized as medical advice or a medical diagnosis. If you think you're in need of medical attention or treatment, please seek it immediately. This recording will also contain sensitive subjects such as binging and purging, weight, and depression. Please listen at your own discretion and do what you think is best for you. Hey podcast listeners, how are you guys doing today? (laughs) I'm doing good. Today, turned out to be a wide open day for me. I had four appointments scheduled, but two of my clients needed to reschedule, which being the classic introvert that I am, I'm always, I always enjoy client calls, but I always equally dread calls for some reason, just because I have social anxiety. Once I'm on the call, I'm good. But before the call, you will see me being like, please, please, I don't want to do it. I can't talk to people when I clearly can't talk to people. It's, it's, it's classic, but I have a lot of free time today, which is good because I need to get a lot of things done earlier on in this week. My dog, he's having surgery the 18th. He's actually having surgery on Thursday. He has to get a small mass removed. They think it's benign and then he has to get a teeth cleaning. So we're just combining those two things, but it's sad. It's sad. We're looking, I've tried to switch to like making all of his food. So he's eating homemade food. I don't like, I don't know what this mass is from. Maybe it's just genetics, but I have, it's something to do with his diet, which we thought we were giving him really good food. I, I think cooking him whole fresh food every week can only help him. But the funny thing about that is not that I'm cooking my, all my dog's food from scratch. Like there's no excuse not to feed yourself well. The dog, should, if the dog is eating healthier than you, y- y- there's there's no excuse, right? <laughs> Which I, I think I do a pretty good job of it, but I was like, you know, if you can take care of the dog, you can take care of yourself. Anyway, so today I'm doing my podcast, even though I didn't plan to do them. But I want to talk today to you people out there. I I speak mainly to women, but I know it's not just women out there who listen to me. So whoever you are out there listening, if you are a type A performance person that's constantly like, I got to keep on going, I have to do all this work again and again and again, and you binge to help yourself with that. For example, maybe you have a ton of work to do and it's all due the following day and you only have so much time and you never give yourself any breaks, but then the evening rolls around, you have that work to do. And so what you do is you binge in order to get the work done. Like you think, oh, the binging will keep me going. It'll fuel me. Or you think I don't have time to deal with not binging tonight. I have so much work to do. We might as well binge to get it over with. And then let's do the work. If that's you, This podcast episode is going to be incredibly helpful because I'm going to give you some new tips and tools in order to deal with the binge urge that maybe you haven't considered, haven't thought about in a while, but I think it will help you. And the reason I was able to get pretty specific, if you feel called out right now, it's because I work with a lot of clients like that and I am that type of person. I don't know if I'm actually type A because I let a lot of things slide in terms of Like I'll put up posts that I know have grammatical errors, but I was too lazy to reread them, all those things. I, but I am someone who's constantly like, we have to keep going. We're driven towards the goals. And I think I'm type A over the big macro stuff. I'm like, we need to reach this goal by this time. And that's what drove me to bulimia really, because I'm like, we have to keep our weight at a certain, certain threshold and we can't do it. And if we do it, we're bad, whatever it is. So I'm type A in a different way, but I don't know if I actually classify it. I think my boyfriend would describe me type A. (laughs) My mom would do so probably am, but I am someone who knows how to work hard. I run a six figure successful business and help a lot of people and manage a lot of different hats. And I know what that's like. And I also used to not be able to follow what I was supposed to do in a day unless I wrote it all in my hand. So I've grown a lot in terms of being able to be productive, but also someone who struggles with binge urges and struggles with high anxiety and the need to suppress the urge that I feel when I have a lot of stress going on with food. I still sometimes struggle with that. And so I know how to manage it fairly well. I did it this morning, which I talked about on our private podcast. But also the reason I know about this so well is because a lot of my clients do too. I don't know if it's the law of attraction or what, but I tend to attract especially for my private clients, a lot of high-paced career women that are doing big jobs, have a lot going on. Also moms, sometimes the moms are working and doing lots of stuff and they have a big career while they're also raising children and newborns. 
or they have just have the newborns, but they're taking care of everything in the household. Do you guys, do you guys that are moms, a lot of my coach friends are suddenly having babies all the time. Coach friends I know, like Renee and Renee Sager and Natalia. I can't pronounce her last name. She's so terrible. But Natalia, binge proof brain, they both have babies. And I'm like, how do they do it? But just having a baby is alone a lot to do. So anyway, I work with a lot of clients that have stuff to do and they are usually very perfectionistic and driven. And then that translates to, I need to do anything that it can take to get this stuff done. So I'm going to binge or just not deal with the binge urge and binge so I can get the things I need to do done. That's how I know it so well. And so the tips I'm going to talk with you about today actually came directly from a client call, which I love to do. It came directly from a client session. Like I literally sent this to her in an email. So I just want to say it. I knew how to do it on the podcast because I know if she's struggling with this, you guys out there are too. So what we talked about one, here are the tips for you. I'm just going to stop rambling and get to it. One is you can use the energy from an urge. Not always, but I want you, and like a lot of times we think of the urge to binge as our enemy as something that's fighting against us, that's something that's inconvenient, something that's forcing us to do something and that it needs to be fixed. The emotion, typically, there are different types of binge urges, I know, but the binge urge we're referring to today is the binge urge where it feels like you, your body is at such a high frequency and it's so, as this client described it, revved up that you feel like you need to get rid of that energy and you can't do anything until it's gone. Your stress cycle is at an all-time high, right? And you are just freezing up and the energy feels like you want to crawl out of your own skin. That's what I always described it as. Like, I feel hyper. I feel like I need to move around. I feel like I can't be in my body right now. I just need to explode. And binging, lo and behold, usually solve that problem. And the the reason is, is that actually eating a bunch of food, one, lowers our stress, t- our stress response, which really sucks, especially high calorie food. Like you eat a bunch of cheese, your stress tolerance is going to be lowered. I don't know if it's because your digestive system is now taking up a bunch of energy. So a lot of it's leaked out or what. But the, the thing about it that I want to say is that that urge that you're experiencing, you're viewing it as your enemy and something to be fixed. But maybe instead you could consider using that energy. You could view it as hyperactivity that's going on in your body. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you just need to fuel it. What if that energy is you getting your adrenaline up, you getting yourself revved up to do the work you need to do, especially if you're someone who's high paced, career driven, doing all these things, you are likely telling yourself, I have so much to do. I have so little time. I have to like... If I went to my dog and I started telling him things like, you would want to go on a walk, you want to do these things, you want to get a treat, he would get so amped up because I'm telling him thoughts that are exciting to him. So his, his body would be like, yeah, yeah, we have the energy, let's do it. You are telling yourself like, we have so little time, we have so much to do, it's go time, you have to do this right now. You are also amping yourself up. You're being that person to their dog that's getting them excited for no reason. And your body's like, okay, here's the energy, here's the adrenaline, here's the cortisol, come on, let's go. And instead then you're like, whoa whoa, whoa, where's this feeling coming from? We have a lot of work to do. We don't have time for this crazy ass feeling that we have. So let's get rid of it. Let's suppress it. And so that way we can be distracted. But the funny thing I've noticed in my business and in my life, when I have that energy, we're going to talk about when it gets too much and it's actually unproductive next. So bear with me. But when I have that energy, sometimes I try to subdue it. Sometimes I'll have a snack or I'll like very, I'd say about once a week, I take a CBD gummy if I'm having a very stressful day. And that would go into the next category we're going to talk about of when you might want to burn the energy or suppress it. But sometimes I'll take one and I actually feel a little bit too fatigued, a little bit too like low anxiety to get things done. And I'm suddenly too chill is what, the, the, what I'm trying to say. And then that energy that was so uncomfortable is actually not there anymore. So I'm not going to get the task done. And what I find too, is a lot of people when they binge to be productive, they actually aren't that productive because let's be real, like doing two things at once, especially binging and then writing emails or binging and taking care of your baby or binging, doing whatever. It's not, it's not as productive. Had you just sat down and gotten the task done? Have you just written the email and then went and had the snack? And when you're binging and you're suppressing that energy, it's taking up more energy, priceless energy that you have to do the work, all that thing. It's actually something you can utilize. So the first tip to reiterate is that maybe when you have an urge, sit with it for a second and realize 
This is untapped energy. This is me getting myself revved up to do the task. Why don't we do the task, right? And see how we can utilize this high powered energy. It's uncomfortable. Let's sit with it. And I find when I'm like that, and I actually do utilize the energy, like this morning I was experiencing it. But now that I'm sitting down doing the podcast, that energy has disappeared because I'm. it's literally outflowing into the words that I'm saying right now to you. I'm using my urge energy for this podcast instead of consuming a bunch of food and then throwing it up. That's what I'm doing, right? I didn't have an urge to binge and purge, but I heard it had an urge to snack this morning emotionally because I was had a lot to do. That's one tip is that not viewing it as a problem and actually viewing it as energy to be utilized, viewing it as a superpower, viewing it as some sort of untapped fountain of youth you found in your body to get work done. The second thing is to burn the energy. So let's say that the energy is so so overwhelming and consuming over all consuming that you feel like you can't move you feel like you can't breathe you feel like you're just paralyzed if you feel like you can't breathe you may be having a panic attack which is a separate thing and probably should talk to a doctor or physician about how frequently you're having panic attacks and see if they wouldn't recommend any other treatment or therapies for you but if it's just that kind of almost a little bit of shortness of breath, almost a little bit like, I, I can't do this. I can't think. Your mind is shot, right? As Brene Brown said it, I think just you're shot, you're spent, whatever it was. But you can't function anymore. And I want you to be careful. Like first try to use the energy because sometimes people think that they can't function, but they actually can. But so be careful how much you're saying that versus how much is the reality. Let's kind of dip into that feeling for a second and 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 take a, take a gander as to what is true. But One thing you can do is burn the energy before trying to attempting the task or trying to binge. And that would be by doing some sort of physical activity for two minutes. And the reason I'm recommending two minutes, oftentimes it takes longer to process an urge than two minutes. Let's be real. Like if you're going to have an urge, it might be way more intense and you need time to ground yourself. Your stress cycle doesn't just finish. If you're in a freeze response or you're in a fight or flight response, you're not just going to be cool in a minute after going through some thought work and being like, I'm okay. But these this two-minute exercise I describe is something that you could use to kind of get yourself a little bit back to reality so you can take the next steps, maybe bring your energy down to the point where you can use the first tip I said, which was using the energy. But the point of this is that when you're in a stress cycle, one way to help yourself complete a stress cycle, and the book Burnout talks about this by Emily and Amelia Nagowski, a really good book, highly recommend. I have a whole workshop on it based on that book and my course, but they are brilliant. One way to complete stress would be to resolve the stressor, meaning that you would finish the email or finish the task or finish the brief, whatever it is that is stressing you out, the, the, the task that you have not completed, that's causing you to feel so overwhelmed. And that is part of stress. You need to actually complete the stress or complete what's stressing you out, the stressor. Otherwise, it'll keep coming back and then you'll keep being in the same stress cycle. But then there's also resolving the physical stress. So stress is a manifestation in your body, right? When you experience some sort of stress, whether it's a bur- being in a burning building or it's having an overwhelming to-do list that you have to accomplish or you feel like you have to accomplish and staring down at like it's the barrel of a gun. Both those things are stressful in their own thing, but they manifest in the body in a quite similar ways. We all have the same stress response. I mean, we may manifest it differently, but it's going to respond in your body in a physical level. You are going to go through a fight or flight response, which I'm not going to explain here. I talk about it a lot in my program, but and I've talked about it in other episodes. And But I think when I say fight or flight response, most people know what I'm talking about. When you're going through that though, Sometimes you can get stuck in a state of stress and that's in a, in a state of being in flight or f- fight or flight. Oh my goodness. I need to do tongue twisters before this episode, but fight or flight a response. And when you're in that constantly, that's what can lead to burnout, constantly being stressed out with no resolve. The best way to relieve your stress can be physical activity, doing something that makes you feel like you've actually physically gotten away from the problem, even if the problem was just sending an email. So ways you could do that in two minutes, of course, is maybe wiggling around, literally just wiggling your body. Because I notice whenever I have the urge to binge or something like that, it feels also like I need to just move. I need to explode like a baby that wants to start dancing or whatever, or the dog that has the zoomies. Maybe just let yourself have the zoomies for a second, right? And wiggle around, run around, do some jumping jacks. You could do some push-ups. You could dance. You could do whatever. If you aren't as is able to do those things. You could laugh, you could try crying, you could try calling a friend. But physical 
physical activity seems to be the best way to reduce stress responses. Outside of that, there is like being with people, having physical contact. So a hug or something like that can bring comfort. Crying sometimes can be very cathartic and other things. But physical response, if you just have two minutes and you're by yourself wiggling around and you're seriously considering binging, so I'd assume you're by yourself, then you can do those things. And what could be beneficial about this, like I was saying in the beginning, is that it's not going to completely resolve the urge, but it may get you to a point where you feel like I can move again. I've been able to wiggle around for two minutes so I can actually move to the task that I need to do and then see after we've completed some of these tasks if I still actually need, air quotes, need to binge, right? And I also want to point out to you guys that are really high-paced and career-driven and constantly doing stuff. A lot of like the, the, the issue my client brought up was like, I don't have time to process an urge. If you have time to binge, you have time to process an urge. If you have time to binge, you have time to wiggle around like a fool in your office or whatever for two minutes before you decide to binge. Binging and purging take up way more time. Physically, like it just takes you time. Emotionally takes you time. Mentally takes you time. And it's going to make you far less efficient at whatever you're trying to do. How do you just done the task? Do not let your mind fool you that that managing a binge urge is going to be so much harder than actually binging. That is that is a lie your brain tries to tell you. And I want to be very clear and very harsh even right now that that's not the case. I used to tell myself that all the time. It always wasted more time. And a lot of times people think the binge urge takes a while because what they do with the binge urge is they wait for the binge urge to go away before doing whatever it is that they need to do. And when you're waiting for something to go away, it's like you're waiting for the pot to boil by watching it, right? It's not going to go away. You have to just go do something else. That's why when I tell people about the binge protocol in my program, it's pause for two minutes, decide to binge or not binge, and then move on. Because if it's going to take you more than five minutes, you're not going to do it. And if it's going, you have to wait for the urge to be done, then you're building this belief that I need to be paralyzed until I recover and then get things done. And really the truth of recovery is that you learn how to deal with urges and not not keep adri- giving into them. What's the right word? Not keep answering them by binging. And over time, you build new protocols to deal with uncomfortable feelings that may appear in the form of urges to binge or may appear in the form of emotional eating or something else. But the the answer isn't just wait for all urges to go away and then do your thing, especially if you're busy, especially if you have a life. A lot of you guys listen to me, you do stuff. So that's the second thing is burn the energy, use a bit of the energy to wiggle around, right? And get some of the point where you feel functional again, and then go back to task one that I mentioned, which is using the energy to do whatever you need to do. The other thing is I want you to ground your thoughts <laughs> in that moment. This is less about the urge and just more so what to do. But I want you to consider in that moment what you need to do and what's causing you so much stress and realize that it's just one thing you have to do, one thing only. If you're anything like me, I look at my to-do list and I think of every single possible thing I need to do in the next week and month and I get overwhelmed because I know I can't accomplish that all at one sitting, but my brain is trying to think you have to do all these things. And once you start thinking of everything you need to do, you get overwhelmed, you get anxious, and then you binge because you can't handle it. No one can. I'm very precise with my scheduling now. It's taken me a lot of time and I'm still working on improving it. I'm sure I'll have a new way of scheduling in a few years after I've gone through different evolutions of myself and my business. But what helps me is making sure I'm concentrated on one thing at a time. I'm not multitasking. I'm not watching TV while I'm trying to write an email or do content. I'm not trying to edit podcasts while checking my to-do list or planning or budgeting. I'm not trying to do those things. I have a to-do list I put down, but I always make sure I'm focused on this is the task right now. Sometimes I'll even put a sticky note over the other tasks so that I know it's just this, just get this one thing done. Because once I start thinking about multiple things, that's when I'm not as performing as well. That's when I get stressed. That's when I can't handle it. For you, you can only do one thing at a time and you have to stop telling yourself the lie that you're good at multitasking. You're most likely not. We're all pretty bad at it. We're all much better at getting one thing done. I know people like to say women are better at multitasking, but, and and to some degree, I feel like I'm better at that. My, my boyfriend sometimes, 
I'll like, he can hyper-focus on one thing where I can be having something going on in the background of my brain and then be doing other stuff. But I tend to be much more efficient when I just focus on one thing. So in that moment, ground yourself and realize what thoughts are causing you the anxiety. And remember that all you all you can do at the end of the day is one simple thing. This client also, she has ADHD. And one thing that she does that's very helpful for her is setting a timer for 30 minutes. And just during that 30 minutes, getting done whatever whatever it is that she can get done. And then once that has passed, she can move on to something else, but it helps keep her brain focused and has an actual end in sight, which I know sometimes people struggle with the thinking, this is going to take forever. If you set a timer, no, it's going to take 30 minutes. I also do something in my own business where it's like, we have to get it done at this time. Like there's just whatever we can get done during this time is what we get done. So this morning I wanted to make our Monday morning, Monday motivation post, which is about what I'm talking about, more cool in terms of the visuals on Instagram and stuff like that. But I didn't have time for that. I didn't want to spend time on that. There's far more important things that I need to be doing to help my clients, to help my group members, and to create some big stuff that I'm planning for this business over the next three months. Therefore, spending time on graphics I could have, it could have taken me hours to create the most beautiful graphics, but instead it took me 15 minutes because I wanted to get the post out and done. It's much more important for people to just read it, see it and utilize it rather than me making it pretty. And that's the definition of just getting done what needs to be done in this amount of time and letting go of some perfectionistic standards, which is much less overwhelming and better for most people. So I hope that this has helped you, especially for you type A women over there that are a little bit like we have to do everything and stay in their goals. You can achieve your goals without binging to help you and the binging isn't helping you, but I hope this maybe maybe helps you see the, the urge to binge in a new light, that it can actually be utilized, that it could be your superpower. I always like to think of my anxiety as my superpower. It's helped me a lot. I don't think I'll ever not have anxiety. My mother has very high levels of anxiety. I think it's a genetic thing and just also how I was raised. My dad also is someone who's very timely and gets anxious if he's not on time. He's very much like, we need to get it done right away. I come from two of those parents that manifested in completely different ways. But something cool about that is that they've given me the gift of energy. I think of my anxiety as energy and, and, and the ability to be hyper vigilant runs through my veins of like thinking of every single problem and constantly want to do something. It's a curse for sure. And I need to learn how to chill out, which I'm working on all the time. It's a constant effort to chill out. I've been trying to, to chill out really quickly. I've just been taking once a week to go outside and cloud gaze for 15 minutes, just stare at the sky and do nothing. And it's been so healing. <laughs> But I usually do it on the weekends when I have more time and I'm outside anyway. But anyway, the gift of anxiety, I like to think of it, even though it can be very paralyzing and very upsetting. And I wish that I just didn't always have the anxious thoughts that I did. But if I can't get rid of it, I might as well use it. And I have the gift of energy and hypervigilance. And that is actually something that can be utilized and it can be your superpower. It really can. And so if you stop seeing the urges as your enemy rather and see them rather as your superpower and your indicator that something's going on, either you're getting revved up to do something or you need to take a moment to process that stress and do some sort of physical activity or you need to ground yourself, it can be your barometer, right? It can be your compass, the urge isn't actually your enemy. It's just a sign from your body at the end of the day. It's a sign that you need something and you get to be the determinant of what that is. So utilize it. It could be your saving grace. <laughs> I'll let you guys go. I have one space left for the month of May. So if you guys are interested in working with me privately, my private coaching is almost fully booked, which is kind of crazy to think about, but it is. I'm working on some things for group coaching. I'm working on an in-person event. Don't get excited yet. It's going to be a little bit before um, I'm launching that enrollment, but I'm looking forward to it because it's the first thing I've ever done that's in person and it's probably going to be small. The space will be limited, but I'm working on those things. So get excited for that. And then we're going to be having a free challenge. So you can join that. That is the free stop binging challenge. And it will give you a lot of daily modules that will help you with how I teach people not to binge and get you some motivation if you're feeling stalled in your recovery. And lastly, I just hope you guys are doing well. I've been really having fun in my business lately and helping a lot of clients, talking to many different people and seeing you guys online progress. So it's been great. All right, I'll let you guys go. Never give up on yourself. Bye. 
Hey, if you found this episode helpful, check out my website at bingebreakers.com. It has free courses, awesome group coaching, and private coaching available to you right now. Thank you.